Welcome back guys. Today we're going to look at this SB Acoustics SB13PFC25-04. Right there. I think this woofer looks great. It's got a plastic frame that's a little bit of an unusual shape and it's going to give the speaker a different look that you don't see every day on DIY speakers. I also haven't seen too much information about this driver probably because of the shape so hopefully this information will help somebody out. Let's get on to looking at this thing get a peek at it and measure it and see what we have. Here we have the packaging for this woofer and I'm just going to open it up here to give you a bit of a look-see at how they come. Overall, the packaging for this cost of driver was as expected and totally reasonable. It has a cone guard, a uh, silica packet there, and um, you know, a sturdy box. And here's just a look at the woofer itself. The frame is really what sets this woofer apart. It's plastic. It looks to be some kind of an ABS. It has a large magnet but no pull vent. And uh, the cone is some kind of pressed pulp paper. Overall, very good looks for this driver. Um, it looks like a driver that should cost more than it does. You can really see the, um, the plastic frame in this photo here. Overall, I'm really happy with the way these things look aesthetically and I'm excited to see them in the speaker boxes. Uh, I just um, temporarily solder on some test leads like I did for the tweeter. Just a little dab of solder to keep everything in, in contact. And then what I do here is I measure the volume of the box and uh, this is to get the TS parameters. I haven't broke these drivers in very much so I'm just getting these parameters to see how they compare to each other more than what the final parameters are. So there I took a sweep free air and then I put it into the speaker box and take another sweep. And here we have the results of the first driver. This is sample one. You can see that compared to the factory specs, FS is a little higher than, uh, than it's supposed to be. But again, this is not really broken in. Overall, these specs do match the manufacturer specs pretty well considering how this test was carried out. This is just to show you the difference between out of the box and in the box. You can see FS increases as it becomes FB and the resonance frequency also goes a little bit lower in magnitude. We can also see that the, um, the driver is clearly a 4 ohm driver. So, for sample two, I did the same procedure out of the box and in the box. I'm very impressed with these results. The two samples are very close to each other, and that's ultimately more important than the factory specs. If they were egregiously different than the factory specs and box predictions were all wrong and everything, that'd be one thing, but they're not. They're quite close, and between the two samples, we have very good agreement. So overall, I'm quite happy with this result. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the driver out, um, add some stuffing, and see if that cleans up the impedance a little bit because there were a couple little wrinkles. So we can see that it did clear up a little wrinkle at about 800 hertz. Uh, this is a good thing. There's probably a bit of an internal reflection that was affecting things. Um, we also see that the FB is damped a little bit um, and slightly lower in frequency. And again, I'm just going to measure before and after to show the results for sample two. And as with sample one, we see a little bit of a reduction in the resonance frequency of the box and a little bit of a smoothing out of the um, impedance profile above 100 hertz, but nothing too um, as, as obvious as sample one. But I take a couple sweeps of each driver. So you can see sample 1 and 2 line up quite nicely in terms of FB. 
they're both hitting around 75 hertz as far as the crossover frequency kind of area let's say one to two thousand three thousand hertz there is a bit of a divergence between the two realistically though this is only about 0.3 3.4.5 d- ohms. When you consider the cost of this driver, it's really quite good. There's nothing to complain about here. Now I just mount the drivers using permanent hardware, and I was really quite happy with how this turned out. Um, as you know, this is a kind of a funny frame to mount, but it turns out it mounted better than the tweeter. The tweeter I actually needed to recess another millimeter or so. Here's the measurement setup. I'm at a half a meter away. There's my first measurement. And this is sample one on axis. The most important measurement here. Um, I'm really impressed. The sensitivity is quite good. It may not look quite as high as the spec sheet because of baffle step losses, but you can see in and around 900 hertz or so, it's actually higher than the spec. This is because of some edge diffraction. It adds a little bit of energy here. So sensitivity is pretty much bang on the manufacturer spec and um, the overall profile of the frequency response looks to be close to the manufacturer spec as well in my opinion. Breakup is you know nicely rolls off above 2000 hertz and then a little bit of hash above 4000 hertz but we'll see in a minute it's actually not that bad of breakup. It's quite benign and you could safely use this driver up to 3000 hertz in my opinion. I plan to use this woofer quite low between 1500 and 2000 hertz. But again, this is because I'll be on a desktop setup and I will talk about this in the next part of the series. Okay, and here we have sample two. And again, we have very similar results to sample one and the manufacturer spec sheet once you consider baffle step losses. And uh, if you overlay the two, you can see how consistent the results really are. This is great news. Um, We do see a little bit of difference up near the breakup. It's hard for a manufacturer to keep the tolerances close up in this region. So really no harm done here. You shouldn't be listening to the driver up in that region anyways. So really within the bandwidth, which is below 2000, 3000 hertz, very good consistency very pleased to see this result the next step was to take the off-axis measurements I believe this is very important data especially in a desktop setup like this so here we have 0 15 30 45 and 60 degrees off axis and again excellent news this thing is superb even the breakup has relatively controlled off-axis behavior It isn't until you get right up to the peak that things go really wild. And um, really, uh, there is nothing to complain about here. Everything is very consistent. The next thing I have here is cumulative spectral display, which I often don't share. And this really shouldn't be compared to any other results you may see on the internet. but I did share it for the tweeter because there was some weird behavior going on there that I wanted to share. So we here we have it for the woofer. The important thing to point out is what's happening around four or five thousand hertz. This is quite clean for a woofer breakup, but it is higher in level than the tweeter. But once you get down to the really low level, it actually shuts up quicker than the tweeter. Um, Overall, I think this would still be more objectionable than the tweeter though but it is quite good for a large diameter cone such as a five inch mud woofer for that frequency. So it's quite clean up there. Um, You could get away with a very soft filter for this woofer. The next thing I wanted to do is see what kind of base response I was getting in such a sealed enclosure. It's quite large for a sealed enclosure for this woofer, but it's not a ported enclosure. So with that measurement sweep, we can see that this thing has a very gentle roll off, which is because it's in such an oversized sealed enclosure. The trade-off being that excursion can go quite wild with this thing. F3 is around 100 hertz. Uh, Once the passive crossover is applied, we will actually see an F3 closer to 80 or 90 hertz. You know, even even listening to these full range without subwoofer support, some EQ from the computer would work to flatten things out. You can see F10 is very nice and low at 40 hertz. 
So ultimately, I'm not even sure this thing needs a port or a subwoofer. So ultimately here, uh, listening is going to tell me whether or not a port is needed or EQ or a subwoofer. But I think I have a lot of flexibility on the table here, which is a good thing. The next thing I needed to do was just drop this into a crossover simulation software. I use XSIM and see how this thing works. And what just happened? I dropped in a second order crossover and bam, the thing just snapped right into place. This is honestly my first try with it. And I'm kind of, you know, twiddling with knobs here going, really, that's it? So ultimately this thing really behaves. And there it is, the SB13 PFC 25-04. Overall, this is a pretty awesome woofer. It's only five inches, it has great sensitivity, excellent off-axis response, nice clean breakup. I'm really impressed with this. This woofer has surpassed my expectations. And when you consider the price point, I mean, what are they, 20 or $25 a piece? Unbelievable. I'm really impressed with this. If you want to see more about this Life S5 series, please subscribe right here and also check out the video of the tweeter for this video right here and the build video uh, part one right here. Thanks guys.